Hey guys, welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to properly set up your music and sound effects in Unity so that you can play all your sounds from an audio mixer. This will let you use different effects for different sound groups as well as control your volume with a slider from a menu. Let's get started. So I have a really simple scene here with a player and a test enemy and if I hit the escape key we've got a test menu. This currently doesn't do anything, we will go through that together. You don't need assets to follow along with this tutorial, however all of the assets you see in this project can be downloaded for free. You can use them personally or commercially, that's totally up to you. I've left a link in the description. I hope you enjoy. So let's start off by just grabbing some sound effects first. I will leave a link to this down in the description below, but this is called Chip Tone, and it's just a really nice sound generator tool that you can use to download free sound effects. I'm gonna click Hurt. I'm gonna save that one, and again, and one more time. I'm just gonna drag all of those into my sounds folder there. And I've just renamed those to hurt one, two, and three. So first, let's just get a sound effect playing when we damage our enemy. So what you might think that you want to do is, you know, add an audio source to your enemy. And then let's just get a sound effect playing in our enemy health script right here where we call damage. So let's create a field for our audio clip. Right, so we've set up a private audio clip called audio sound clip. Let's also get a reference to the audio source called audio source. And let's get that component in our start function. And then down here, you know, you could say audio source dot clip equals damage sound clip. And then you could say audio source dot play. And if we drag in a sound there, let's uncheck play on awake and let's try that. Now doing it this way, we can already see a problem, right? When we damage our enemy for the third time and we kill him because his health is at three, we then destroy our enemy game object, which is going to destroy the audio source as well. So the damage clip is not going to play that third time and that's definitely not what we want. So let's get rid of the audio source and we'll get rid of these and this and this. So the solution that you might come across after looking into this is you can just directly call audio source dot play clip at point and you pass in a clip which is our damage sound clip. We can also even give it a position in the world so we'll just say transform dot position and you can also pass in a volume and we'll just put it at full volume. So there's no audio source on our enemy nothing like that and yet when we play you can see that that fixes our issue. However, this introduces a new problem. If we do play focused, and we do that again, and there it took me a couple of tries, but I managed to pause while it's actually got this object in the scene. So if you do play clip at point, what it's actually going to do is temporarily create this game object in your scene, which has an audio source on it with your audio clip. Now, remember our goal with this video is to be able to control our volume with these sliders here. But in order to do that, we need to be able to access this output and put our audio mixer in here. And you cannot do that with play clip at point. There's just no way to access this audio source. So that is not what we want either. So what we're going to do is set up our own script to handle this. So inside my scripts folder and inside of managers, I'm going to create a new C sharp script called sound effects manager. I'm going to create a new game object called sound effects manager. Let's reset the transform. I'm going to move that up here and assign sound effects manager to it. Let's open that up. Let's get rid of all this. Now I want to be able to call this very easily from anywhere. So we are going to do that by making this a singleton. So that is super easy to do. All we have to do is say public static sound effects manager instance, and then create an awake function. And inside of there say if instance is equal to null, then instance equals this. What that allows you to do is let's just set up a quick public void example function. If we call this from anywhere else, we can say sound effects manager dot instance dot example function. We can call it like that without having to grab the component or do anything like that. We can just call it directly. You only ever want to make something a singleton if you know there's only going to be one of them in the scene ever. So just be careful when you're setting these up. Let's get rid of this. So let's create a function that will essentially do the same thing that play clip at point did. So we want to instantiate a game object into the world. We want it to play the sound effect and then we want it to destroy itself after the clip is done playing. So we're going to say public void play sound effects clip. And we know we're going to need to pass in some sort of audio clip. Let's call that audio clip. And just like play clip at point, I also want to pass in some sort of transform. Let's call that spawn transform. Okay, so how is this going to work? First, we want to spawn in the game object. Then we want to assign the clip. 
Then actually it would be nice to be able to assign some sort of volume. So let's also add a float called volume up here. Then we want to actually play the sound. Then we want to get the length of our clip. And then we want to destroy this game object after a certain amount of time. Now we don't have to get a reference to the audio source because what we can actually do is say audio source, let's call it audio source, is equal to instantiate. So what are we spawning into the scene? Well, we're gonna need to set up some sort of prefab game object. So let's get a reference to that up here. Now, normally you would say private game object, sound effects object, but then we would have to include the extra step down here of having to grab a reference to the audio source. If we just assign it as an audio source directly, then we can actually grab that component while we spawn it in at the exact same time. So now we're spawning in our sound effects object. Where are we spawning that in? At our spawn transform dot position. And we don't care about rotation, so let's just say quaternion dot identity. So next we want to assign the clip. So now we actually have a reference to our audio source here. So we're going to say audio source dot clip is equal to audio clip, which is being passed in here. To assign the volume, we'll say audio source dot volume is equal to volume. To play the sound, we'll say audio source dot play. To get the length of the sound effects clip, let's set up a float called clip length, and that's equal to our audio source dot clip dot length. And then finally we'll call destroy on what? on our audio source game object after how many seconds after clip length now let's not forget that we set this up up here so before we forget let's go ahead and assign that in the inspector so to create our object let's go up here and say create empty sound effects object let's reset the transform let's add an audio source let's uncheck play on awake and i'm going to drag that into my prefabs folder let's delete that and now we can assign that to our sound effects manager so finally to test this out let's actually call this when we damage our enemy so we can say sound effects manager dot instance dot play sound effects clip what are we playing our damage sound clip what's the spawn transform just the transform and volume we could create a serialized field up here or we can just pass in a one here for full volume let's give that a test there you go. And you can see just like play clip at point, you can see that when we create it, it very quickly instantiates into the scene and then destroys itself. One thing that's always really nice is to have a couple of sound effects clips and then to play one at random. So let's set that up very fast in our sound effects manager. Let's copy and paste this. Let's rename that to play random sound effects clip. And instead of just taking in an audio clip, let's have it take in an audio clip array. So the only thing that needs to change here is we need to grab some sort of random index. So we're going to set up a private integer called rand, and that's equal to random dot range. So the minimum is going to be zero, and the maximum is going to be our audio clip dot length, which is the number of clips in our array. And now when we assign the actual audio clip down here, what we can say is audio source dot clip is equal to audio clip of a random index. Now if we go back to our enemy health and we change this to a private audio clip array called damage sound clips, let's get rid of this one, and instead call sound effects manager dot instance dot play random sound effects clip we're just going to pass in damage sound clips at the transform at full volume and finally let's lock our inspector so that we can actually grab all three of these and drag them onto our damage sound clips there you go so now let's get this set up to be working with an audio mixer let's go to window over here Go to audio and select audio mixer i'm going to dock that up here and let's create a new mixer called main mixer all right, so I'm not gonna go through all of these because that's outside of the scope of this tutorial. However, there's all sorts of awesome things that you can do with this. It will automatically set up a master node with an attenuation effect. Attenuation essentially just allows you to control the volume. That's really all it means. Now, what we do care about is the groups over here. We want to be able to play our sounds in different groups. So let's create a new one. Let's call that sound effects. And let's create one more, select the master and click plus, and let's say music. So you'll see both of those were set up with attenuation as well, which is what we want. So what we want to essentially be able to do is inside of our slider functions here, if you scroll down, you'll see on value changed. We wanna be able to assign something in there that controls these sliders here. And to do that, we're going to need to expose some parameters in the audio mixer. So if you select the master, you'll see your inspector changes over here. And if you right click the volume, we can say expose volume of master to script. Click that and now you can see exposed parameters one if you click that and double click this we can rename it to master volume and let's click sound effects and do the same thing right click click expose and let's call that sound effects volume 
and music, right click, expose, we'll call that music volume. So back in my scripts folder, I'm going to go into my managers and create a new C sharp script called sound mixer manager. In my scene here, I'm going to create a new empty called sound mixer manager. Let's reset the transform. I'm going to drag that up here and add the sound mixer manager script to it and open that up. Let's get rid of this. We want to grab a reference to this audio mixer here. And in order to do that, we need to go up here and use the unity engine.audio namespace. So let's say serialized field private audio mixer called audio mixer. And before we forget, let's grab a reference to our main mixer. So we are going to create three functions. One called set master volume with a parameter float called level. Another one called set sound effects volume with a parameter float called level. And a public void set music volume with a parameter of type float called level. Now, these are the functions that are going to be called inside of our slider on value changed. So, every time we change the value, we're going to call one of these corresponding methods. We are passing in a float called level because that is going to correspond to our value right here. So, what are we doing inside the master volume? We're saying audio mixer dot set float. We need to grab the string names exactly so it's just easier to go back here double click and control C, let's throw that in there and the float value will be our level. Let's throw that in these methods as well. Okay, and so now you can see that our normal volume range corresponds between zero for the max and minus 80 for the minimum. So let's change our values down here. Our minimum value is going to be minus 80 and our max value is going to be zero. Let's do that for the other ones as well. And now to actually call these functions when we change the slider value, let's click plus here. Where is the function stored? It's stored in sound mixer manager. And if we click here and go to sound mixer manager, we want to go up here to dynamic float, which means it's going to dynamically pass in this value right here. And this is the master. So we want to set master volume. Now let's do the same for sound effects and music. I don't currently have a way to play music in my scene, so I'm going to very quickly create an empty called Music Manager. I'm going to reset the transform. I'm going to move that up here. I'm going to add an audio source. I'm going to keep play on awake checked as well as check on loop. And this is just a random song track that I have here. I'm going to drag that in. There we go. So I will have music that plays by default right away. Now, how do we tell our audio mixer which one is sound effects and which one is music? Well, up here in our music manager in the audio source, we can click right here in output and select our music group under the main mixer. And for our sound effects, we can click on our sound effects object, open up the prefab and do the same thing, except this output is going to be the sound effects group from the main mixer. You can see that working there. And of course the master node will control both of them. Now the one problem that you may have noticed is the volume doesn't get quiet the way that you would expect. We are assigning this value from the slider here, which goes linearly from minus 80 to zero to this fader over here. The problem though is the way that decibels and sound works, this does not affect your volume in a linear manner. This changes in a logarithmic manner. And really you can just think of the decibels changing on like a curve instead of in a straight line linear manner. And I'm not gonna get into what that means, but what I am gonna show you is how to to fix it. So this is not the correct function that we want. What we actually want is to say audio mixer dot set float master volume and the level is going to be math f dot log 10 passing in our level float times 20. This is one of those things where I really, I don't know what this math function means. I'm, I'm just, I'm not going to lie. I have no idea what the heck this means. All I know is that the math that goes on behind the scenes here is it will properly translate your logarithmic interpolation of the volume into a linear interpolation of the volume. So we changed our code. The very last thing that we need to change is inside of our sliders. We don't want this going from minus 80 to zero. We actually want this going from 0 0.0001 to one. And let's default the volume to full. And let's do it with the rest as well. There we go. So now you can see 
as I slowly increase my master slider. This jumps up really fast, but then slowly creeps its way towards zero. So this is the way we actually want it to work. There you go, guys. I hope you found that extremely helpful. Thank you so much for staying all the way to the end. And please let me know in the comments down below if you have any future ideas for tutorials you would like to see. Thanks, and I hope you have an awesome day. Bye.